Bon vendredi, tout le monde. Happy Friday, everyone. There's no other way to put it. But when times get tough, Canadians step up. I want to start today by thanking all Canadians for all their efforts in the fight against this global pandemic. You've made a lot of sacrifices over the past many months. You helped keep people safe. You helped save lives. Everything we did, small and big, in following public health orders, in uh, making sure that ourselves and our loved ones and frontline workers were safe, made a difference. So thank you. On this eighth and final day of Hanukkah, and with only one week to go until Christmas, there are more than 75,000 active COVID-19 cases across the country. Deaths per capita are continuing to rise in many G7 countries, including Canada. Countries around the world continue to feel the pain of the second wave. We need to take this very seriously as numbers continue to head in the wrong direction. Our fight against this virus is not over, even as we're preparing to say goodbye and good riddance to 2020. It may be the holiday season, but we have to be more careful than ever. On Monday, vaccinations started for the most vulnerable and our frontline workers. Canada has secured agreements for up to 417,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines ahead of schedule. This includes over 200,000 early doses of the Pfizer vaccine scheduled for next week and 168,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine before the end of December, pending Health Canada approval. I want to assure you again that any vaccine approved in Canada will be both safe and effective and that health experts are making those decisions independently. In January, we'll be getting 125,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine per week for a total of about 500,000 doses for the month. With the guaranteed millions of doses coming in 2021, every Canadian who wants a vaccine will get one, no matter where they live. This is the largest immunization campaign in our country's history, and I know that we have the right plan and the expertise that we need. Getting a vaccine in a week or in a month won't do you any good if you catch COVID-19 today. That's why we need to keep working to halt the spread of COVID-19. So please continue to follow public health guidelines. Avoid gatherings, practice social distancing, use the COVID alert app, do the right thing for the most vulnerable, and think of being careful as a gift you can directly give your fellow Canadians, especially frontline workers who continue to step up every single day to keep us safe, to keep Canadians safe. We are making a lot of efforts to make sure that Canadians have access to safe and effective vaccines throughout the country. At the same time, we are also making sure that we procure and develop treatments to fight COVID-19, as well as other viral infections. In that regard, today I'm announcing an investment of close to $9 billion through the National Research Centre in Canada to support the development of these treatments. This investment will go to four companies for treatments against COVID-19, two in Montreal and two in Vancouver. It is important to continue developing solutions right here in Canada to fight against COVID-19 and to prepare for any other eventualities. It is through working with researchers and scientists and businesses that we will attain our objectives. Time to cook good food and have a few extra pieces of dessert because, well, why not? But for far too many others, the reality is very different, especially during this pandemic. More than a third of Canadians who rely on food banks are children. That's unacceptable. In a country like Canada, no child should go hungry. In October, our government announced another $100 million under the Emergency Food Security Fund, doubling our investment from the spring. This morning, 
Minister Bibo outlined the details of where that additional funding will go, including $30 million for food security in First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities. With these funds, food banks, local food organizations, and Indigenous groups will be able to purchase and safely distribute food to help vulnerable people and communities. I want to say a special thank you to all the volunteers and workers of food organizations who have stepped up to help their fellow Canadians. I met many of you virtually in October, and I remember you sharing how you had to adapt really quickly when the pandemic hit. Thank you for your work, your time, your generosity, and for your commitment to answering the call for others in need. I know we would have all liked this situation to be different for the holidays. The year has already been difficult, and once again, we are asking for extra efforts on your part. But this is not time to let down our guard. There is hope. We know that vaccines are arriving. We were not sure that we will have a vaccine against COVID-19. When we talked about it six months ago, our scientists and researchers have done incredible work here and throughout the world. And now we know that there is an end to the pandemic, and it's coming. But we are not yet there. We have millions of doses reserved for Canadians. Everyone will be able to get a vaccine in 2021 in Canada. But before we get there, together, we need to spend a difficult winter. We must continue doing what we've been doing for months. Be careful, avoid gatherings, follow public health guidelines, download and use the COVID alert app, avoid gatherings. Christmas will not be the same this year, but it's still going to be an opportunity for us to be with our close ones physically or virtually, and to think about how we were able to go through this pandemic as individuals and societies, be there for one and each and every one, and to grieve the thousands of Canadians we have lost, but to step up efforts to have an even better Christmas in 2021, far better than the one we have, we are going to have this year. But to do that, we must hang in there. We may offer an, a vigilance through as a gift to our public health workers working in the front lines to protect us, even during the holidays, to save lives. We all have a duty to protect them, and we have the capacity to do so. Let's continue doing what we have to do, and we shall get through this. Our government has done everything we can to protect you and your family. We've sent millions of pieces of PPE to the provinces and territories. We've created special programs for families and workers who needed it. We've supported small businesses so that they could stay open and hold on. We've presented historic measures to rebuild a more resilient economy that works for everyone. Now, I know that this won't be the kind of holiday season we might have hoped for. But that doesn't mean we can't feel hopeful about what comes next. This past year has had its challenges but we face them together. When this new virus started spreading, few people thought we'd have an approved and safe vaccine so quickly. So thank you to our scientists, to researchers, and to experts around the world who stepped up and worked incredibly hard. You've all done incredible things this year, and it's important that we keep supporting you in the work you do, and that we keep listening and trusting you in your expertise and your work to keep us all safe. The vaccination campaign has started. Millions of doses are already secured and will be coming in in the coming months. We planned thoroughly. We're relying on advice from the best experts, and we're working with the provinces and territories to roll them out. Canada has the most, most vaccines secured per capita, and the most diverse portfolio of vaccine options in the world. We're also 
doing our part to help developing countries get access to more tests, treatments and vaccines so we can fight this pandemic everywhere. There are reasons to be hopeful for 2021. Just like through this spring, summer and fall, we will continue to be there for you. We will have your back every step of the way. We will do as a government whatever it takes for as long as it takes to keep you safe and supported. We're coming into the final miles of this crisis and we can't give up now. So stay home, stay safe, and we will get through this together. Joyeux Noël tout le monde. Merry Christmas, Happy holidays, mostly. Happy New Year. Thank you, Prime Minister. We'll now turn the phone for questions from media. Just a reminder, one question, one follow-up. Operator. Thank you, merci. Première question, Raymond Fillon, TVA. À vous. Question. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I would like to come back to the SERP. People have been asked to repay money they received by the 31st of December. Following interviews, you asked uh, CRA to be indulgent. But what should those people do? What should they do exactly? Answer. Thank you very much, Raymond. We know that already millions of payments were made to the CRA, people who received uh, the SERP without being entitled to receive it. So Canadians understand that it's important to be fair and responsible. But I also know and I've heard Canadians say that they are concerned by that information that they received by the Canada Revenue Agency. What I'm telling them is, do not worry. You don't need to make those payments before the end of the year. It was just for your information. We understand that of the hundreds of thousands of people who received those letters, there are people in very different situations. We will be looking into those situations in the upcoming months to make sure that we are there to help the most vulnerable. Rest reassured. We want to make sure that we're not giving money to people who needed it to take it back during Christmas. We are there to help most vulnerable people. And that's the promise we made as a government. And we shall continue keeping that promise. Follow up. So people will not be taxed because it's written in white and black that if you don't repay by the 31st of December, you will be taxed. So are you confirming? Answer. I can confirm that people who made honest mistakes, maybe people who receive some of those payments don't have to worry about taxes. We will work with everyone. The pandemic is still here. People are still anxious and worried. It is a Christmas. It's going to be a Christmas unlike any other. I don't want people to get worried. I've made a promise that we shall need the people, we shall help the people who need help and we shall continue doing so. People need to know that we uh, were serious when we said we would be there for people. We didn't uh, deliver support to millions of Canadians who needed it just to claw it back at Christmas. Already we've seen uh, over a million repayments of uh, people who, uh, uh, who got the, the, the CERB payments uh, unjustly or, or extra CERB payments. And uh, that's because Canadians are fair and fair-minded and responsible. But every step of the way, we've promised to be there for vulnerable people. So I don't want this to be an extra stressor uh, on a Christmas that is already uh, not like others. So be reassured. Uh, any good faith mistakes will not be penalized, uh, will not uh, be pursued. Uh, we're going to work with people over the coming weeks and months to ensure uh, that, uh, that people get the support they need. Uh, I think all Canadians want to be uh, focused on the things that matter the most uh, this Christmas, uh, your health, the health of your loved ones, and uh, the opportunity to, uh, uh, to recollect this past year and look towards the next year with renewed optimism. Uh, these letters should not be a source of, of, uh, of anxiety for anyone. Thank you. Next question, please, operator. Thank you. Merci. Next question, Doug Robertson, 
Winnipeg Free Press. Line open. Good morning, Prime Minister. Your Quebec Lieutenant Pablo Rodriguez told Lynn and Wall that you can't increase health transfers because the structural expense would jeopardize Canada's credit rating. You've never mentioned the credit rating issue in this context before. In fact, you said you will increase health transfers. So is Mr. Rodriguez making this up? Uh, obviously, we're proud of Canada's very strong credit rating because it contributes to us going into this pandemic with one of the uh, strongest uh, fiscal balance sheets of any of the G7 countries, and we continue to have it. But as I've said, our focus is on being there for Canadians as long as they need it, whatever it takes during this pandemic, and that's what we're doing, which is why we have flowed billions of dollars in supports directly to Canadians, to workers, to families, to small businesses, why we've uh, flowed money to provinces to support the most vulnerable, to help with their health systems, why we've delivered on PPE, on rapid tests and testing kits, uh, and now on vaccines that we're paying for. We have demonstrated every step of the way that we're doing what it takes because we know that that's not just the right thing to do, that's the best way to ensure that our economy comes roaring back for the long term. I have said we will uh, sit down and work with the provinces on uh, expanding health transfers because we know that long term uh, there is a need for that. But those decisions are to be taken uh, once we see the other side of this pandemic and we have a better idea of what uh, the future looks like. Our focus is on being there to support Canadians uh, and that's what we're going to continue to do. And a follow-up, Bill? Okay, so you, you didn't actually answer the question on the accuracy of that statement, but I just want to ask about Rivera and the pension plan. Rivera has given false information to Winnipeg health officials numerous times about its nursing homes, like how many staff it had during outbreaks. Rivera is owned by the public sector pension plan, so why are you not leveraging those shares to get the company to increase the staffing in care homes? Right now, our focus is on supporting seniors, uh, vulnerable Canadians right across the country with whatever is necessary. That is why uh, we have worked closely with the provinces on uh, extra help. We've put forward a billion dollars more uh, in the fall economic statement to help with infection control and prevention and other measures in long-term care homes. Uh, we continue uh, to work with the Red Cross, uh, and uh, we sent in the Army. Uh, through, uh, through this past month, and we are through these past months, and we are focused on being there to support uh, vulnerable Canadians and seniors during this crisis. I have no doubt uh, that as uh, this crisis in its current exigencies uh, draws to an end, there will be many reflections about uh, how we deliver long-term care uh, to seniors across this country in a way that uh, respects their dignity, their safety. Uh, and ensures the best quality of care right across the country. Uh, the federal government is happy to be part of that conversation and part of those reflections that I know provinces are going to have around, are around differing outcomes uh, in different styles of, uh, of care homes. Uh, I think those are important conversations to have, but right now our focus is on doing everything we can uh, to support uh, the vulnerable Canadians in those care homes. Thank you. Next question, please, operator. Thank you. Merci. Next question, Tanta McCharles, Toronto Star, line open. Good morning, Prime Minister. Um, speaking of uh, what you were just talking about, reflections on lessons learned and whatnot. Um, you, you spoke, when you spoke to, to us after you met with the premiers, you said that you, you thought it was necessary to take lessons on public health from what was happening in this pandemic and that we had to learn lessons just as we did through SARS, and yet I don't hear you ever suggesting sort of how what that looks like. Um, I know there's an in-house lessons learned exercise going on at Health Canada, but can you speak more specifically to how you would like to see that lessons learned exercise unfold? Is it a federal inquiry? Do you think each province has to undertake their own? What do you see? I think every day during this unprecedented pandemic, we have been uh, learning from what we did the previous days, the previous weeks, and that is ongoing. So we can make sure that every given week, every given month, we're giving the very best support in the best ways to Canadians. And that means listening to our experts. It means looking at the outcomes of what we've been able to do. It means learning from what other jurisdictions are, are, are doing. And certainly 
uh, this has been a constant exercise in in examining uh, what has been done, uh, what could be done better, and bringing those in as quickly as possible. Of course, uh, as uh, we get through this pandemic, there are going to be many, many uh, larger lessons to learn, to set down, and to set in place uh, so that future governments faced with similar situations, although we certainly hope not, uh, will be better equipped with what we've learned through this pandemic. I think uh, that is simply understood that we will have to be very serious about making sure we uh, learn all these lessons that were you know, tragically extremely hard learned through this pandemic. Um, but we haven't yet uh, decided or determined what that looks like. We're still very much focused on getting through uh, this second wave right now. And the other... Sure. And the other day, um, when in one of those year-end interviews, you told an interviewer that um, you, you uh, in contemplating, you know, when the next election might happen, possibly in 2021, you said you, that you have, you, while your government won't choose the, it's not necessarily in the driver's seat on that, but you are, um, that uh, an election, first you have to get through the pandemic. We have to get through the pandemic first. So I'd like to understand, what does that look like to you? What do you determine... Uh, the will, what will determine when you're through the pandemic? Is it 50% of Canadians vaccinated? Is it a certain level of, uh, control, of infection, control of infection? Can you speak to that? When do you deem us to be sufficiently through the pandemic? I think you, you lay out exactly sort of the range of reflections and uncertainties that we know for 2021. We know uh, that we are uh, going to be vaccinating millions of Canadians and vaccinating every Canadian who wants it. And that uh, will get us significantly through this pandemic. We know that experts still have to uh, evaluate carefully which threshold of uh, vaccination will allow us to start uh, releasing uh, some of the restrictions in various places across the country. Will they be uh, in certain sectors or will they be in certain regions? There are many things we don't know. What we do know, however, is we're still very much in the middle of this second wave and the decisions that we take now as Canadians to keep ourselves safe uh, are going to make a difference for the coming months. Um, as to political considerations and uh, what, uh, what decisions happen around elections, well, we will see because that's not our focus right now. Our focus is on supporting Canadians now and in the months to come and getting them vaccinated uh, as we get through this pandemic. Hey, Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, Prime Minister, the United States is expected to vaccinate about 10 times as many people per capita as we are by the end of the year. And this schedule of Pfizer deliveries you just mentioned looks like the rate of deliveries is going to be constant. It's the same rate we're receiving them uh, in December as we'll be getting in January. Uh, my question is, what are you going to do to close that gap, given that the strategy you've talked about, the broad variety of, of candidates, is kind of a gamble? They're we don't know they're going to be approved. We don't know when they're going to be delivered. But we do know at the current rate of the one approved vaccine, the Americans are going to vaccinate a lot higher percentage of their population before we do. What do you tell Canadians about that gap? Uh, indeed, we have uh, secured, as you point out, one of the best ranges of va vaccine, vaccine uh, portfolios uh, of any country in the world. And we've secured more potential doses per Canadian than anywhere else. Uh, so we know that while it is important and it is great news that we're starting to vaccinate now uh, in December ahead of schedule, um, it is uh, once we get a significant portion of the population vaccinated that we will start to be able to look at loosening restrictions. Um, the Americans have uh, a health care system that uh, you know, will have challenges and will have successes. We have our own process. We're focused on our own process to make sure that as many Canadians as possible get vaccinated as quickly as possible with vaccines that are safe and effective and approved by Health Canada. We are, of course, watching approvals elsewhere around the world. But the decisions made as to what is right for Canadians and what is safe for Canadians will be done by the Canadian experts who are uh, putting our safety first with uh, uh, a gold standard of approach that, uh, that, is, uh, that is the envy of the world. We will continue to focus every step of the way on delivering safe, effective vaccines for as many Canadians as possible, as soon as possible. In French, please, we shall continue focusing on the importance of delivering 
safe and effective vaccines to the greatest number of Canadians as quickly as possible. Indeed, we do have the best portfolio of potential vaccines of all countries, and we also have the greatest potential doses per person than other countries. But we know that it will take many months before we get to levels where we can relax some restrictions. But until then, and we must listen to our scientists. But at every stage, we are doing all we can to make sure that Canadians are protected when it comes to their health and safety. Radio Canada, question. I understand that you are saying that you are not going to abandon Canadians in need. We do have freelance workers who do not have a lot of money and will have to repay the SERP. But at the same time, businesses took advantage of SERP to be able to make lots of profit and pay dividends to their members. But these ones are not going to be repaying the SERP. Do you think that this is unfair? Answer, we are facing an unprecedented crisis and pandemic. And as a government, we needed to take a decision. Do we analyze every application in March and April to make sure that we were giving money only to those who needed it most? including, or not forgetting the situation, that we did not know what the coming weeks and months were going to look like? Or did we have to take a decision to quickly help people so that they could be able to get through the pandemic? Yes, indeed, the government made a choice. We decided to help people, and we decided that later on we will find out how equitable that was and find out if anyone took advantage of the system and require those who wanted to engage in fraud to pay back. But the choice we made to quickly help the most people possible was the right decision for Canada. Already, we have seen that even with all the tragedies we saw, the tragedy hit us less hard than other countries. And when we look at the jobs that have returned, we are now at 80 percent of jobs that were lost that have returned because of COVID. And the United States, it's only at about 60 percent. So we made the right decision. Now, we shall find out how we can continue helping the vulnerable people. And if people did not act right, for example, businesses in the way that they use those uh, grants, we shall look into that. But the basic decision we made was to be there for Canadians, and that's the decision we made at the very beginning. We wanted to make sure that everything will be fair. So as far as helping Canadians is concerned, we, we did right. Follow-up question. Let's be clear. So companies that abused the SERP and who made profits from the salary wage subsidy will have to pay it back in the coming months. Answer. We shall look into the rules to find out if the rules were respected, to find out if everything was equitable as intended. But the choice we made was primarily to help Canadians get through the pandemic and later on find out what was properly used or what could have been an opportunity for businesses to take advantage of the pandemic. I think people know we made a choice as a government, not a choice that every government around the world did, not a choice that every political party might have made, but we made a choice to help Canadians rapidly at the very start of this pandemic flowing supports to families, to workers almost immediately, and supports to small businesses and businesses of all sizes rapidly afterwards. And that has worked. That has worked to keep food on the table, to prevent Canadians from plunging uh, deep into debt. It's also worked to hold on for many small businesses and main streets across the country that will be able to, instead of having to rebuild from scratch when this pandemic is done, will be able to simply reopen. 
That's going to help us come roaring back. And we're already seeing the impact of that choice we made to help Canadians have positive echoes. People uh, have seen better health outcomes than many of our peer countries around the world in terms of fighting COVID-19. People are also seeing 80% of the jobs that were lost because of COVID-19 already back in our economy, whereas the United States are uh, just around 55 or 60% of those jobs come back. So we've done well because that was the right decision to take. But that choice to get help out quickly to everyone meant that we understood that after the fact, we would have to look at things and see uh, if it was done fairly, if people took advantage of this in improper ways. Like I said, good faith mistakes will not be punished. But there are people who uh, committed fraud and companies who perhaps profited uh, in ways that uh, is not right. And those are things that we will look at. But again, the focus on this pandemic is getting through it. And I think that's what Canadians expect. Hi, Prime Minister Tom Perry, CBC. Um, I'm just wondering if you've heard anything from Pfizer about whether they can ramp up deliveries as the year goes on. If you've heard from other companies about how quickly they can deliver, just to get an idea of how quickly vaccines might be coming in. And also, if I could just put a second part on this. A while back, you said that if Canadians buckled down, they might be able to save Christmas. So what, what do you think went wrong? I think, first of all, uh, we continue to work with all the vaccine producers to try and ensure... Uh, as many doses as possible for Canadians as quickly as possible. We're pleased to have uh, clarity and predictability uh, right to the end of January in terms of deliveries of Pfizer. Uh, but as we've said, with uh, potential Moderna vaccines arriving before, uh, before the end of December, uh, pending, uh, pending uh, Health Canada approval, um, and uh, the Pfizer vaccines already coming in and, and uh, reaching Canadians, uh, we are very confident our, uh, about our ability uh, to vaccinate uh, uh, 3 million Canadians at the very least uh, by the end of the first months of 2021. But there's much more to do, and we will continue to work uh, with all the vaccine companies. Um, in regards to, uh, to Christmas, uh, at Thanksgiving, we saw uh, that cases were rising, and we continue to be in this second wave. But I know uh, that uh, Canadians have been doing uh, the right kinds of things across the country. And yes, people are tired and people are frustrated and cases are still creeping up in some places and going in the wrong direction overall. But I've seen it uh, in the conversations I've had, uh, in uh, reports from across the country, how Canadians get it, that we just need to hold on for a few more months uh, as vaccines are starting to arrive and we'll get through this. Canadians are pretty good at making it through long, tough winters, and this is going to be a longer and tougher one than we're even used to. But I know because I've seen people there for each other, people wanting to do the right thing, even though it's hard, that we're going to be able to keep cases under control because Canadians uh, stay focused on the things that matter. Prime Minister Michael Couture from Global National. Um, despite what you just said and Canadians doing the right thing, in Ontario today we're seeing over 2,000 cases again, and we're going into a period where people are likely going to want to try and bend the rules a little bit. Because of the holidays, they want to get together with people. How frustrating has it been for you that no matter what you say out here and no matter what Dr. Tam says, that the numbers continue to go up somehow? I think the vast majority of Canadians are being incredibly thoughtful uh, about uh, what they're doing about how they're keeping themselves, their loved ones, their parents and grandparents, frontline workers safe. But we've seen the challenges of this coronavirus uh, hit extremely hard in communities across the country and indeed in countries around the world. Um, that's why we need to continue to remain vigilant and attentive. But the uncertainty we've had over the coming months when we didn't even know whether or not there would be a, a safe and effective vaccine, has now been lifted to a large degree. We know that there will be an end to this COVID crisis. We know that vaccines provide an end, and it's coming. And as tough as this winter is, the spring will be better, and the summer may well be much better. 
But to get there, we have to keep hanging on. To get there, we have to stay disciplined and be there for each other. Because I know as much as many of us want to see our loved ones this Christmas that we won't be able to see except through a TV or computer screen, we also want to be able to see them and give them big hugs next Christmas. And our capacity to have them here with us next Christmas depends on all of us thinking about doing our part this Christmas and in the coming months of this winter. And so I repeat it in French. I believe that people have to continue doing their part. We see people wearing masks, maintaining physical distancing, following advice, even if it's difficult. Canadians are good at living through difficult winters. Our country is known for its winter. We can see that in the way we live, this winter will be another difficult one, and we shall get through it. And we know that the summer is coming, and summer will be better. Spring may even be much better. But at this time, we need to think. Yes, we want to see our loved ones and our friends this Christmas. We can only see them through computer screens in most cases. But that is so that we will be able to see them next year, next Christmas. We will be able to get together and celebrate without lots of tragedies, without lots losses of parents and grandparents and vulnerable people. All we know how to do as Canadians, and we shall get through this. Um, as you bid uh, good riddance to 2020, um, what is your message to the Chinese government on how they ought to be treating Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver? And could you please clarify earlier remarks you made this week about whether or not you are actually optimistic they will be getting out anytime soon, or if there's any tangible sign of that. This will be the third Christmas that Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor uh, spend in arbitrary detention in China. It is incredibly frustrating to me that the Chinese government continues to not understand that Canada is a country that respects the rule of law and will continue to. That we are a country that rejects coercive diplomacy and arbitrary detention. And that China's approach in the way it's been conducting itself is not improving its relations with any country around the world and indeed is harming its own interests. We will continue to pursue every avenue uh, to bring the two Michaels home as soon as possible. And I remain hopeful to get good news an hour from now, a day from now, a week from now, a month from now. We continue to work uh, and be optimistic that we're going to be able to bring them home. But we will not put in danger other Canadians and we will not flinch in our defense of the rule of law and of the values that Canadians hold dear. We will continue to stand up for our interests and our citizens every step of the way. Thank you very much.